and welcome to the X-22 Report. My name is Dave and this is episode 245 and today's date is December 21st, 2013 and the title of this episode is the Current Economic Collapse News News Brief for this Saturday. And let's get right into the Economic Collapse News and we're going to head out to Greece and what we're seeing out there, we understand that their unemployment is 30%, youth unemployment is over 60%, they're having three bailouts, they don't have the revenue to pay the interest on the debt, people are starving, people are cold, and uh, people have no place to live, and it really is terrible. And what every government does when they're in this bind where they cannot create the revenue to support the debt. They start going after the people who are working and they tax those people more and they go after those people who own land and they tax them more and they continually pile up the taxes to try to meet their their uh, their expenses but it, it just never works out because as the, austor- as the austerity package uh, dictates they have to lay off people, they have to cut programs, and again, with less people working, the less money you have coming in. And right now, the Greek Parliament has pr- approved a law on property tax, um, and this was um, demanded by the international lenders. This is part of their austerity package, and they have to do this um, to get more money. And as they get more money, it puts them into more debt. They have to cut more people who are working, and more people are out of work, and they have less coming in. So they resort to taxes here. And critics have described the new law as a final blow to Greece's shaky economy. The new law, which is to uh, take effect on January 1st, 2014, will fix a tax on agricultural plots larger than a uh, a thousand square meters. And the tax is aimed at raising some 2.65 billion euros. And this is what is happening now. There's heavy protests going on because these people are being taxed, taxed, taxed. And we're seeing this throughout all of Europe and we're seeing more taxes here in the US. Now, we understand that this Christmas season is not going well. Retailers are going to really hurt this year and out in the UK, retailers have slashed their prices this weekend in hope that shoppers will finally flood um, the stores um, before Christmas because what they are seeing, their traffic is dwindling. The people purchasing dwindling. So they're cutting and they're giving discounts between 50 and 75 percent off and they are really pushing this because they realize they have all this inventory on their shelves and they can't get rid of it. The same thing is happening here in the U.S. Uh, Retailers channel stuffed and they have a huge amount of inventory hoping that they would be able to sell this during the Christmas season and as I reported yesterday 40 percent of the people saying listen I'm going to spend less because I just don't have the disposable income and stores right now are scrambling they are putting in and they are they are um, listing heavy discounts just to get this stuff out of there because otherwise they are left with all of this and the same things happening with all amount with the automotive uh, manufacturers, they channel stuff, the dealers, they have between 76 and 80 days worth of inventory on their lots, hoping that people are going to rush to the dealership this Christmas and buy all of these cars. And we know that's not going to happen. Now, we understand that um, the NSA, their surveillance, and of course, when we heard all of this coming out, you know, we heard from the um, uh, the president saying that, oh, this, you know, the the surveillance saves lives. We've, you know, we know at least 50 threats that have been averted because of the information, and we're starting to realize that all of this was lies. Of course, the NSA spokesman first came out and said, we're not spying on people, and of course, that was a lie, and then all of a sudden, he had to admit that we were spying on people, and now the panel that was investigating NSA finally came out and issued this recommendation upon finding that it was not essential in preventing any attacks. All of this spying had nothing to do with preventing anything, and we all know that. We all know why they were spying. It was for economic reasons. It was for blackmailing government officials, Supreme Court judges. It was meant to spy on other countries, and especially to spy on the American people. And this is why they are gathering all 
call, your email, your phone calls, social networks, you name it, they're taking it because they are creating social profiles of every single person because they understand when all of this falls apart, they need to go after those people who are going to be a threat. And how do we know that they're going to do this? I mean, people listen, and I say this a lot, but we have to go back to the laws that they passed, which are completely unconstitutional, but but, they, but to 80% of the population, if it's law, it has to be right. And of course, laws doesn't mean that it's right. It just means they put these in place to protect themselves, even though it's unconstitutional. Now, we understand that the NDAA 2014, you know, slips through, it's headed to the president's desk, and, you know, he's going to sign it. And this was all during the Duck Dynasty fiasco that was going on. But this 2014 NDAA is a lot worse than the previous one. But of course it has to be, because the collapse is coming, martial law is coming. They need to take the NSA information, take it, and integrate it into the new system that they're creating. So when it's time, it makes it easier for them to go collect the people who they believe is a threat. Now, Section 1071 outlines the creation of the conflict conflict. Records Research Center, where the unconstitutional uh, uh, obtained information that the NSA has collected is compiled and shared with the Department of Defense. The information called uh, in the wording captured records can be anything from your phone records, emails, browsing history, posts on social medias, and this is all integrated and it is uh, then created into a social profile of you. And the NDAA included provisions that um, purported to authorize the President of the United States to deploy the U.S. military to apprehend and indefinitely detain any person, including American citizens, yes, who he believes represents an enduring security threat to the United States. Hmm. Things are getting a little bit clearer now. And uh, the NDAA places every citizen on the United States within the universe of potential covered persons. And Section 1071 of the version of the 2014 NDAA approved by the House and Senate this week expands on the scope of surveillance established by the Patriot Act and the authorization for the use of military force. So we can see where all this is headed. Now the question is, why do they need this? Well, it's very obvious. They understand the collapse is coming. They understand that there are powers within the country that are going to try to take away the power from them. And that's what they're afraid of. This is why all of this has been put in place. This is why the NSA has been spying. This is why we have the Patriot Act. This is why they continually renew the NDAA. This is why they're trying to get rid of the Constitution. And let me just say, uh, President Obama doesn't care about the Constitution because he keeps changing laws at whim. Obamacare is a law, but he just goes in and just completely continually changes it without asking Congress or anything. He just does it. And we can tell already that uh, that he doesn't follow the Constitution. He does what he wants, and now he has the power to say that person, this person, round them up, and this is a huge, huge problem. Now, FEMA wants to put base camps in Puerto Rico or the Virgin Islands for its emergency responders. FEMA is gathering information from prospective vendors who could help the agency in case of an emergency in Puerto Rico or the Virgin Islands by quickly establishing two large responder support camps to hold about 3,000 people, and they want to create five smaller and more remote camps in this area. And these camps will be um, staffed 24 by 7 all the time, 365 days a year. Now, what do they need these for? For their resp I mean, we know what these FEMA camps are. We know what they're doing. And this is an, a, a, a place where emergency responders can go and have a place to stay outside, pretty much, of the U.S. Now, in my other reports, I reported that um, uh, 
the United States was evacuating uh, American citizens from South Sudan, and right now a UN helicopter and a U.S. aircraft was hit. Uh, they were hit while they were removing people from this area, but we have to remember what's going on there. France right now is in Mali and in Cent uh, Central Africa Republic, and they're using drones there to, you know, push back Al Qaeda. And we know there's no Al Qaeda uh, that was CIA created, and they are there for the natural resources. They are also there because they realize that China is pumping in trillions of do billions, trillions of dollars into um, Africa at this time and this is why the US uh, France uh, the private Western Central bankers are all down in this area because it is a run to get the natural resources to control this area and China has proposed or committed about a hundred and one billion to commercial projects in Africa some of which are under negotiation while others are currently underway at this time and African governments with limited resources welcome the Chinese investments they understand and they see what is happening that China is becoming the next reserve currency of the world Kenya has already become the clearinghouse for the Yuan and they are making their move the US the central bankers are making their move just like Russia is moving into the Arctic the US Canada are moving into the Arctic capturing the natural resources and establishing bases in that area for World War three and we can see all this now painting a picture we see it it's getting um, clearer and clearer as time goes on now of course China is outraged at Japan as they revamp their defense plan and I mentioned this in my previous reports where they're increasing their military budget and of course they are because they realize what's going to happen World War three so they need to you know ramp up their military spending they need to create warships they need to um, put in place missiles they need to make they need to change their constitution uh, so they're no longer a pacifist nation and they're able to go and attack if they uh, need to and um, and we have to understand that um, President Obama last year in a speech where, to the Australian Parliament he said as a Pacific nation the United States will play a larger and long-term role in shaping this region and its future what he is saying is that when war breaks out they will be there and they've already done the pivot to Asia they've already brought the warships in they have the, uh, the stealth destroyers uh, that moved into the Pacific they have bases that are su surrounding China they're setting up missile bases in Guam the missile shield in Europe is going from Poland to Romania and um, Russia of course is saying if you're discussing this peace deal with nuclear talks with Iran you no longer need the missile shield and the White House finally came out and said listen it doesn't matter what happens with Iran this missile this missile shield is not disappearing so Russia said okay we need to set up our own and they're in the process of doing that right now now we understand the Senate is pushing through sanctions and the president already said um, he will veto this bill so what the senators have done and uh, th they decided that Congress will press forward with additional sanctions against Iran by overriding the president's veto and you have to remember what the White House the Obama administration said if you place new sanctions on the books he will have only one option and that is a military strike and we can see what they are doing now in Iran they are trying to separate them the central bank in all different aspects they're they're maneuvering the central bank is trying to maneuver in and take over the central banks of Iran Rohini seems like he might be in the back pocket of the central bankers it's 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 very unclear but it's it's pointing to that direction the Revolutionary Guard is now saying Rohini watch yourself we see what's going on Rohini is cutting their budgets their military budgets and removing them from uh, different aspects of the country and the Revolutionary Guard said if if this continues we could see some type of civil disturbance going on in Iran and I believe this is what the central bankers US government want they want a separation so they have the ability to move in and strike Iran in a way um, 
because what we are seeing is they are, uh, the president is looking and talking about peace. He told the Senate specifically, do not put more sanctions on the books. And of course, he knew they were going to do this because the Senate is controlled by Israel um, because they pay for all their campaign contributions. And now the Senate is introducing these bills and the president says, hey, I was looking for peace, but look what the Senate did. They did this and now you know, we, we, we might have to strike them. And all of a sudden, you're going to see a false flag event, which I've been talking about because we see the tapering. All this plays into the picture that I've been talking about. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to episode 243, 244, up to this one, and you will see. Now, we are seeing more and more cyber attacks. We are seeing more and more uh, credit card systems being hit, more financial institutions being hit. And this is on purpose. We've been seeing this for two and a half years. This is to get everyone ready for a cyber attack. And right now, Las Vegas hotels, among others, have been warned of more cyber attacks coming. They are being hit. Uh, there are about 300,000 cardholders which were affected. And they just want everyone in the U.S. and the U.K. and all around the, uh, uh, the Eurozone to understand that there is a cyber attack coming because Janet Napolitano of course was out there saying it's not if but when a cyber attack um, was going to hit and she was very sure about what she was saying at the time. Now alarm bells are going off as Al Qaeda network spreads. Joel Brinkley claims the Al Qaeda terror network is spreading like cancer. They're coming in from the, uh, the north uh, across the Canadian US border. They're coming in from the south. Um, they can't keep track of the lone wolves. And the State Department warns that extremists have targeted and attempted attacks on subway, rail systems, aviation, maritime services. Such attacks have already occurred in Moscow, London, Madrid, Glasgow, and soon they are afraid they're going to hit in the US. And we know for a fact there is going to be some type of false flag event, and it definitely will occur here in the U.S. And this is all a preparation for brainwashing everyone to make them believe that all of this is happening for a reason, and this is definitely going to happen in the U.S. And they're doing this on purpose, so when it does hit, they realize, oh my God, it was a cyber attack. Oh my God, um, it was a dirty bomb from Iran because of the Revolutionary Guard. Whatever they want to blame this on. Uh, we, we reported back in CNN, they had intel about um, Assad having chemical weapons, but we weren't sure, and he had a hidden cache, and now here they are in the U.S., and this would be a point where they declare martial law, they have the NDAA, which the president's going to sign. And then we have an, a full-scale martial law. Banks are locked down. You can't get your money out. Now we're going to war, and the Constitution is suspended, and here we go. And now, additional information that the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, is proposing a rule on Friday, and they want this done quickly. They want all major food producers to develop a plan to prevent intentional attempts to contaminate the food supply. And they need this done quickly. This is what it's saying. So we can see where all of this is headed. We understand that the central bankers know, the U.S. government knows that the economy is collapsing. This is why we are headed down the path. This is why they mentioned tapering. This is why in January they're saying they're going to taper, but they left a back door open to them where they said if they had to increase QE, they would. And we know for a fact there will be some type of event which will allow and take the blame off the Fed and the U.S. government and blame it on another country for the collapse of the economy and they will be pumping QE back up. Listen everyone, thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks a lot.